Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the credit card flip tutorial, motion graphics tutorial in Blender and there's quite a bit to cover so let's get straight into it. I have got my gradient here and I'm going to have to do a tutorial on how I do gradients in Blender. Um, that's important because I do do gradients a lot especially for backgrounds um, but we're not going to use it again in the tutorial and I've got my colors on my right hand side and we have the default cube go ahead and set it up right here I have set the um, perspective to be the traditional Cartesian plane x-axis y-axis y being the vertical x being the horizontal okay let's get into it I'm just gonna zoom in with my middle mouse button then I'm going to press the middle mouse button and just pan hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan around a bit more and I've got my cube right here. Then I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab on my keyboard. Um, you can also go to edit mode. I go edit mode here again. Can't remember the keystroke. It will come back to my head in a second, but it's very simple. I know it's around here somewhere, but I'm just going to press tab to go into edit mode. Oh, up here. Top left, edit mode. Good. All right. And what we want to do, we want to select the edges of this box right here let's go ahead and select this here i'm going to change the view to solid and i'm going to lift this up slightly so g and z to lift it up i'm going to select the edges here so i'm going to select you you see the edge turns white and select it holding shift i'm going to select each one of the edges on the side that's what you want then we're going to go to our camera mode press zero and i'm just going to hit ctrl and b and that's going to be the bevel tool once i'm in edit mode right so we see in the bevel tool here and we scroll our middle mouse button to increase or decrease the bevel the amount of bevel count or how rounded this is on the edge and i think this is about the right size here good so you just click off to um, in your case we right click to click it off and press tab and let's see what we've got yeah this looks about right let's just go ahead and pan out and it gives us this rounded box right here and this is necessary next we're going to press tab press Z go to wireframe mode here on the left and I'm going to delete some of these vertices here. Good. I want to delete this here, this box, these vertices, and then that will leave us with the top. So if I press a Z, oh, let's go through that again a bit clearly. So all it is is that I have edges still selected. I'm selecting these four, these edges at the bottom here. With the box select tool and you have to press b to activate the box select tool and you select this bottom these bottom edges here good and then you're just going to go ahead and press x to delete those vertices and that will leave us with this top which is what we want press zero good press z again i'm going to go to solid mode and you can go up here to go to solid or or wireframe mode here and I'm going to press tab um, once more. Let's take this off of edge select. Let's go to vertices select up here in the top left. It's going to select these vertices here. Press G and X to pull it across the X. About, I think about here is good. I'm going to scale this up with S, G, X, put it in the middle. Let's see, is this a bit long? Just feel a little bit long yeah yeah this looks much better and we have our credit card GX good and we're gonna go to the viewpoint shading and we can see that the credit card a bit better and it doesn't have a color let's just put it in a bit more boom All right let's put it into the center and I'm just gonna put the origin point of this rectangle in the center currently it is not in the center and we're going to put it in the center just going to go ahead and go to 
um, object set origin origin to center of mass and receipt moves to the center of mass here good and let's see what we've got here with the shape let's just go and set everything to zero on these so it's in the exact center great so now that we have our credit card let's go ahead and assign it a color we want it to have this purple so i'm going to select this and this purple here and um, we're going to go over to object and we want to just set a link here between the two of these and i don't think the old keyboard shortcut works oh it does so you can use Control and l to make links or if you can't find the shortcut you can always just press f3 and search for the links you know and then just go down to the one that you want to do with the link right but i'm using Control and l and objects and that activates the link and we want to link the material so we want to link this this um credit card with the purple material that we have on the right hand side great so the credit card color is now set all right for the next portion now we want to go ahead and create the front of this card so let's go ahead and create um duplicate this we're going to duplicate this credit card duplicate with shift and D, I'm going to press S and scale in. Great. And I'm just going to go and move it to the top left. Good. And that represents the magnetic card strip, you know, the, the added layer of protection for these credit cards. I want to make it as real as possible. Scale in. Good. And then we're going to go ahead and link this to this color here. So we're going to use the control and L. I want to link materials and uh, let's go ahead and press Z so we can see where it is and go back to solid GZ um, go back to uh, material view preview right and just carry it up with the G and Z grab it and move it up in the Z higher in the Z plane so that we can see it um, you can go a little bit smaller good uh, so let's go to tab mode, select these points, press G and X and just squash it a bit more. Um, yeah, I think this is good. Let's go ahead and create the MasterCard circle. So we're going to go to Shift and A or you can go to Add up here in your top left. And we're going to add a circle mesh. Um, let's see, where's that circle mesh now? So it's right here. We're going to say GZ to lift it up. And let's go ahead and just scale this down with s we'll press g to move it up and we're going to press tab to go into edit mode and we're going to press f okay it's a bit jagged okay so you may want to just add some more vertices so let's create the circle again mesh circle gz oh before i do that let's add some more vertices 32 now when it whenever you add a new object or a new um mesh sorry you get the option in the bottom left to add more properties to this new um ver vertex or this new um set of vertices this new object and it's 32 right now that's it has 32 vertices the circle but we want it to be smoother so we're going to change this to 64 which is precisely double what we had for default we press g and z Good. and that will help to sort of get rid of the jaggedness on the sides make it look a bit more smooth good press tab i'm gonna press f for face so that we add a face to this circle and we're just going to go ahead and add it to add we're just gonna go ahead and link it to some of these colors here i wanted to link to this cream right here so we're going to hit Control and l we're going to link the materials Good. Then I'm going to duplicate it, G, and then press G X to move it to the side slightly. And I'm going to hit um, Shift, select this darker cream down here. And I'm going to do the same thing as the last circle. We're going to use Control and L to link. I'm going to link the materials. Then we're going to press G and Z, and I'm going to push this underneath. Good. Lastly, we're going to add a text. 
for this side, we're going to add a text object and I'm going to bring that text object to the front G and um, Y to carry it down S to scale it in and you're going to type in the numbers on the card which is us four sets of zeros four times space four one two three four one two three four good and just going to scale this in gx gy up a bit and let's just go ahead and pan out to see how these things are spaced out we don't want them so far from the card we want them to as close as the card as possible let's go ahead and sort of just bring these closer to the card Okay, good, this can come out a bit, a bit lower. Great, so this is good in size. Yeah, and I'm um, gonna scale this up a bit more. Uh, what color do you want this to have? I want this to have the same yellow color as this. So you're just gonna go ahead and link it, control materials. In fact, let's link it to the original circle. Control L and go to materials. Good, and lastly, we're gonna create a plane. Good. GX, let's bring it to the top. All right, and that plane is going to represent a mask that we're going to use a bit later on in the tutorial. Let's bring this down here. And then G -Y, y, bring it up, just so that it covers the text. And um, we're going to link it to the same color as the card materials. We control and L. And we're just going to go ahead and just go into edit mode and oops, and just G and X, select the vertices and drag it across so that it covers the text. And let's just stay and see how far away from it it is. You can come down a bit more to cover the text. You want it as close as possible. Yeah, that looks about right. And in general, I'm going to go to wireframe mode and select all of these. And just lastly, select the credit card. I'm going to hit Ctrl and P to pair in all of these objects to the credit card. So I'm going to object, cute transformation and link them to the credit card. Good. So when the credit card moves, these move as well. Let's go ahead and go to the um, material preview everything is looking good here so what we want to do is that we want to rotate this now by 180 so it's going to go ahead and say R we're going to rotate along the Y axis and we're going to enter in 180 so that's R Y 180 degrees and that's going to turn the card to go to the back side of the card you know so that we can add that part of this whole this whole thing as well good so let's go ahead and add some of this stuff right here so i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this card strip right here with shift and d and then i'm going to go into tab i'm going to press z to go into wireframe and with this new one that i have just created gz i'm going to just select the bottom vertices press g and y to bring it up Good, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in with my middle mouse button. Use the box select tool with B, select these vertices here, and select these vertices here, except the one at the immediate top. Good, and that's for both sides. And then I'm gonna press X and delete to delete the vertices. And we're gonna do the same here, except for this one here. We're gonna delete all other vertices. Good. Now we could make a rectangle from from scratch, you know, but it's not. Not logical to create one from scratch, you know, um, in terms of having it in the exact position that we want it. So we just duplicated the card to get the correct positioning. And we're going to select all of these nodes and just press F. Good, and that's gonna create our magnetic strip. We can make it slightly bigger, GX. Let's put G and Y, so at the bottom vertices to make it slightly bigger. And we're gonna say G, Z, and GX, sorry, Y. So we're gonna grab this 
um, ver vertex or vertice object and we're going to translate it along the Y to about here all right let's come out of wireframe mode and go to material mode to see how that looks that looking pretty good let's go ahead and just select this purple down here and I'm going to link it link materials okay it's a bit light so we're gonna have to make this slightly darker it's gonna go into this material Uh, it is using those. Let's go ahead and let's make this darker. Great. That's about the color we want. Good. And we're just going to duplicate. Oh, we need to lift this up slightly above the card so that we don't get these weird artifacts. Um, let's go ahead and let's take a look. Uh, see, so yeah, I can't even get it to select uh, the way it's so ingrained into the card. Alright, G said. Alright, that should do it. Press Z to go back into wireframe mode. Oh, to go back, sorry, into material preview mode. That's looking great. Let's go ahead and duplicate this G and Y to carry it to grab it and carry it on the y-axis. Let's scale it in a bit. And we're going to create the section where we would have our CSV numbers uh, GX and some other information that typically goes on the credit card. Let's duplicate this G and X again, carry it across. And let's just go into tab, edit mode, select these two nodes and scale this down. Then we're going to link this to the top circle here. So we're going to use Control and L material. Excellent. So we have gotten our card for the most part. Our car looks pretty much ready for the most part. Yeah, I think this is how credit cards typically look. Good. G um, Z, um, y, let's carry down a bit more. Okay, so we're going to have to do a bit more to this now. Just going to parent it. Parent all of these to the back of the card. Keep transformation. Good. So if I go ahead and just rotate this freely along the Y, we can see that the card is indeed... All the objects, all the meshes are moving with the card, which is what we want. Good. So we're going to move on to some of the animation on the card now. The first thing is the sheen that we see going on here. So what we're going to do here, we're going to duplicate this, go into edit mode. I'm going to select these vertices, G, and I'm going to put G and X to carry it across. Good. Then we're going to say G and Z to lift it up a bit. Great. And then what we're going to do to create this scene Right, we're just going to go ahead and select these two at the top, put G and X, and that's going to create a parallelogram by sharing it, by shearing it, or by um, skewing it, you know, another term to use, skewing the rectangle. Let's bring it in a bit, and then we're just going to go ahead and duplicate this whole thing here. So come out of edit mode with tab, duplicate it, press G and X. Bring it across and G X here. Share it. Good. And this is going to need its own. So these are going to need its own material. So we don't want these linked anymore. So we should be able to go to object relationships and make single user. And we're going to use materials. Selected objects. Good. So with these two now, we can go ahead and change the colors and it won't affect any other color that has been linked with this. And uh, we wanna make this slightly lighter. And the same for this, we wanna make this lighter. In fact, we can go ahead and um, GX, link these two 
with this when it comes to materials because they're all going to have the same material here and let's go ahead and bring these in a bit and bring these in good and you can even bring this in also gx good so we have our sheen awesome so now that we have our sheen good and it is still parented to the card we can go ahead and animate it so first up i want these two to be parented to this keep transformation good so wherever this moves whoops wherever this moves now um gx the other sheens move with it excellent so let's put it out to the front here about here and we want to animate this so let's go ahead to our location along the x-axis and we're just going to make it go to like 40 just to test the animation for a bit bring it across and we want it to come about here insert keyframe so good so we see that the sheen is coming out Oh, that's working just fine okay so we have our sheen right here so we're just going to go ahead and create a mask for this sheen and to do that we're just going to duplicate the magnetic strip right here and i'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab we're going to select these two vertices on the far left good we're going to go ahead and say gx so we're going to grab it on the x-axis grab on the x-axis and just pull it across until it goes over like this and we want it to go right over the sheen just enough good and what we're going to do i'm going to link it to the background so i'm going to hit control and l i'm going to link the materials to the background and so that this has the same color as the background so that it can act as a mask i'm going to put g and z to bring it up to the top so that it covers it so the sheen won't be seen if we click off we can see that it's exactly the same as the background behind it good and because we duplicated it from the magnetic strip it will retain the parenting to the main credit card good but we also want another one to go underneath it too so when it turns around you know there's a mask underneath as well so if you click the middle mouse button and then just hold it and move your mouse as you are holding it you know we'll come out of camera mode and we can get to see how the z layers are looking you know we want to try and get it as close to the sheen as possible good i think this is looking really good nice so we're just going to go ahead and select both of these masking both of these masks we're going to select both of them we're just going to duplicate it with shift d press G and X and carry them across the side because we also want the mask to be present when the sheen hits the other side of the credit card good so you know if we rotate this on the Y we can see that everything is looking good those masks can't be seen wonderful so with that now if we play this good see the mask can't be seen which is great okay then so now the mask the sheen can't be seen just gonna go ahead and animate these two pieces here which is where the CSV I would go and some card information would go also here so it's gonna go over to the mesh controls and I'm gonna create two new key um, shape keys in the shape key drop down box shape keys right here and the second one we're going to adjust the value so I'm gonna increase the value to one I'm gonna press tab and I'm gonna vote G, I'm going to select these end points here. I'm going to put G and X, carry it across. But just before we finish this, let's come out, go to snap, and make sure vertices are selected and closest so that we can snap them to these ones right here. Get a perfect snap so we can see it's coming out here. And we want to do the same with this one too. It's going to go ahead and create two new shape keys the bases and the 
shift key one and we're going to just select these in edit mode and snap oh sorry let's just control z that sorry before we do that let's just increase the value to one and we're just going to say g and x and carry over and tab so good so one it feels zero it doesn't feel wonderful good so now we can just go ahead and look at the animation for the whole of the back of the card to make sure everything is smooth. Good. So you want that as the card rotates. Oh, I think this is a good time to um, look for the animation of the scene. Let's rotate the card, um, the credit card here. So that it starts from the front. So we're gonna rotate it by 180. In the last tutorial, I rotated, I put the rotation animation using delta rotate instead of the standard transform, transform um, rotate so that we can correct any errors like these. And we can see we're still going to get the rotation right here. And we can see the sheen is now showing. Good, which is what we want. So, the next part here for the sheen of the sheen is that we also want these to show as well we want these to sort of show up so I'm going to go ahead and just decrease the value to increase the value to 1 and add insert keyframe here and just when it reaches here we're going to make it come to 0 and come out let's give it a bit more space too and yeah, so it comes out. Good. And at this point now we want this to be able to come out as well. So insert keyframe and by this point see it come out. And so we have excellent. You see it come out with the sheen. Good nice and fast and crisp and that looks like the back of the animation done so let's go ahead and edit the card the credit card information and to do that we're just going to go ahead and go to our graph sheet editor and we have a bezier curve here for the interpolation between the two key points or to the between the two keyframes but we want a different interp interpolation mode and we're going to go to f curve and we're going to select that different mode or that different um, type and I'm going to select linear so that there's no speed up or slow down and this will look most natural when it's continually rotating so the next part now is to make this continuously rotate so we want to look at the extrapolation of this of these keyframes here the interpolation is in between the keyframes and the extrapolation is outside the keyframes and we want it to have a continuous linear rotation and to do that we're going to go to channel extrapolation mode and we're going to go to linear extrapolation and that's just going to cause this card to rotate forever right, until the timer stops good so next now we're going to see if we can add a continuous cycle rotation to the sheen as well so we're going to go back to the dope sheet editor. In fact, what we're going to do is going to split the screen right here. I think that's a good way to go. And one side we're going to have the graph editor and the other side we're going to have the dope sheet. Because we're going to use the two of them regularly here. Um, I think that's the way to go. Excellent. So we're in the dope sheet now. That's the one we're most interested in. And everything looks ready here, so let's go to the graph editor and let's scale this up. Good. And next we're gonna go into our modifiers tab, select modifier, add modifier, and use cycles. Good. And our sheen is just gonna rotate forever along with our card, which is what we want. And we're going to do the same thing for these shape keys right here for these two sections of the card first we have to duplicate the last keyframe character zero 
when the animation starts, duplicate the first keyframe character 60 when the animation ends. Good. That way it knows when to rotate. I'm going to do the same thing for here. Duplicate the first keyframe and um, we shift in D and then carry it to zero. And then we're going to duplicate the last keyframe, we shift in D and carry it to 60. This way, when we use the cyclic modifier on these keyframes, the modifier will know when to begin the actual animation, you know, which is an important step. So we're going to go into a path modifier here and we're just going to add a modifier to this cycles and so select all of this add modifier cycles good and we're just going to do the same thing with this press a to select everything and hit cycles that way yeah it's just going to rotate like this forever good so we're going to move on to the next part of the card which is the front of the card here and we want when it reaches here let's go to 60 um, let's go ahead and select this card for a bit and we're just going to pause the animation for a little bit right we just want to pause this animation for a little bit let's go ahead and just pause it right so it's not affecting the viewport viewport right now so that we can do this accurately I'm going to animate these. The first thing I want to do is to parent this one on top with this one behind. So the behind is the anchor and I want to start to insert some keyframes here. So a roughly frame 50. I'm going to add some keyframes and I want it to scale up actually 45 we've also got frame 45 I think that's a better one to start with you know I want it to start from zero and scale up to one so let's add the keyframe here SI and then at um, 50 I'm gonna say um, IS and at 40 at 40 we're going to say IS and we want the S to be 0 so we're going to say IS with the S0 so I'm just typing in S for scale 0 S for scale and 0 so you have 0 for the scales of um, for, for the scale at that 40 mark um, timestamp and we see it's just going to scale up great I'm going to turn on back the animation for you see how it looks alright you can see it, it zooms it is it scales up but it needs a bit more time to show let's carry it back a little bit more yeah that's great even bring this back a bit so it's a faster scale up and then at this point when it scales up you want it to move out as well so about here you want this to move out so we want it to translate on the x-axis so let's just insert the x-axis here because this is where we want the translation to begin and at this point is where you want the translation to start from and I'm just going to go ahead and select this here this credit card we're going to go ahead and stop the rotation again so let's put out 60 and just stop the rotation select this right here come back and I'm just going to go ahead and cover this circle, place keyframes, Oops, replace a single keyframe, great, so 
it scales up and pushes out so let's go ahead and let's go ahead so you can see again scales out scales in and pushes out I'm going to select the card once more turn on the animation let's see how it looks yeah looks all right which is what we want great stuff good all right now we just need to see it um, to be continuously rotated I'm going to go into our dope sheet you know, select this and I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this last value here and put it about here about here there it goes good so now we're going to make this cyclical in the graph editor let's go ahead and let's scale this in a bit select these and we're just going to go ahead and add these cycles good so it behaves good okay when doing this one it's slightly different for the for the duplication of the frames we had to duplicate the last one instead of the first one this time and carry it back because we're pretty much ending on the 60 mark and it will disappear before we want it if we don't do it this way let's go ahead and select this as well we're going to do the same so we're going to duplicate this carry it to the end and duplicate it once more and carry it to the beginning and duplicate it and carry it close up so that's about four duplicates here and let's go ahead and make this cyclical I'm going to go to the graph editor add modifiers and cycles good and let's play it see if it does exactly what we want it to yeah it's pretty much rotating awesome so the last thing that we need to do is prepare the text and that's in order now so we have the the mask that we have for the text I'm just going to press GNX carry it down GNY and carry it down I want it down to the very bottom of the credit card let's carry the text there too GY to the very bottom good and for this now we're going to make some changes first stop we need to animate it so I'm going to go to the transform section I'm going to say insert keyframe for the location on Y. Good. Let's move the animation a bit. Good. So about here, we want to start its animation, and then we want to fill up by about here. Good. And for that, I'm just going to go to wireframe, say to go back to material and say GY. Lift it up. Good. And I'm going to say insert single keyframe. So it comes up. Excellent. So all we want to do now is just stagger this so it comes up at a staggered for each one of these zeros. And the first step is that we need to convert this to a mesh so we're going to press f2 type in convert to good and then we're going to say mesh from curve or data good then we're going to select all of this and we're going to say p and we've got p means separation so we're going to just part this by loose parts good they all still have the same texture um transform animation as we can see what I'm going to do now that we separated it into paths 
is that we're gonna just go ahead and um, make these single users so the animation belongs to themselves and to explain what I mean by that if we go and select any one of these zeros in fact let's just select all of them so we can see it a bit clearer box select here and we can see that these are the keyframes in our dope sheet that represent the Y translation that we've just made the Y keyframe and if we try to select one of these keys um, for any one of these zeros we notice that it selects everything and that is because the animation for one is linked to the other they're all linked to one animation um, timesheet and we don't want that we want the each zero to have its individual timesheet so that we can stagger the animation you know so in order to do that we have to take off the relationships but before we do take off the relationships of each one of these zeros to each other we want to go into the graph editor you know make sure that the object transformation is selected just make sure that the um, object transforms is selected um, and make sure that the Y location is selected in the graph editor and then we're going to go to cycles and cycles is just going to make it repeat continuously and we just do that so that when we do separate the relationships we don't have to put cycles for every single zero it would have already been done good next thing we're just going to go ahead and just move these apart for a bit and we'll see why we're moving them apart in a second but we're just going to move the two Y translations the Y keyframes apart and then we're going to go ahead and go to object relations make single user object animation and selected objects so now each one of these objects animation is separated and then we're just going to go to the text editor and we're going to use a script to stagger this Python script right here Good. I'll put this in the description what you'll have to do is that you're going to see an option to add a new text file and then you add it and then you paste in this script and you see run script come up and this script is going to stagger all the animation now that the zeros have been separated good and we see that it's staggered indeed good next what we're going to do is going to go ahead and use B and select these the um, keyframes to the end and I'm just going to duplicate them and say S0 so I'm going to say S for scale and 0 and I'm just going to move them oh sorry let me just scroll this up so that we can see what we're actually doing here it's a bit hard to see on the screen just move this across all right, good. So just going to duplicate it and uh, say S and zero, and we're going to play enter. Good. And uh, with that, now we can see what's actually happening here. Good. That's what we want. And we're going to select all of these these keyframes now, and all of these keyframes, and just going to scale them up, scale them in with S good and move them closer to the 60 mark good and then we're going to select all of these keyframes that we have made here and put them at the 20 mark rough it and all we're doing is just setting the keyframe so that when the stagger happens it happens repeatedly good now if we just go to material mode and we can see what's actually happening good so every time it comes to the point it flips over nicely good and we can carry these closer you know to get a more convincing stagger Good. and let's just select these and carry it close to the 60 mark let's see what we get excellent good 
and then we can carry these lastly to the 60 mark to make it more efficient excellent but it's not really necessary alright and I think this concludes the credit card flip card flip tutorial if you enjoy this tutorial you can give it a thumbs up if you have any questions you know be sure to ask I know this is a fairly complex tutorial to, you know but it does cover a lot of effects here we've covered shape keys we've covered um, text scripts in a sense you know um, we've covered um, the interpolation and extrapolation modes as well as some masking techniques you know that you can use for Blender 2D animations so it's quite a lot in this tutorial though it seems very simple you know by just looking at it quite a lot to it you know so I hope you enjoy this tutorial you know give it a thumbs up and subscribe if it helped and until I see you again with another tutorial